Welcome, this is Megan Mitchell, the founder of Agents of Change Social Work Test Prep. And today I'm going to bring you a very brief overview in our social work shorts of applying for test accommodations. And I just wanna preface this by saying I am just relaying information that is out there on the ASWB site. And I hope that if you are applying for accommodations, you will find this a little bit helpful and knowing where to find some of the forms and resources you will need to apply. So I first wanted to start with what is an exam accommodation? And this is just a definition of what it is, but a test accommodation or test accommodations are any modifications made to tests or testing conditions that allow students with physical disabilities learning disabilities or limited English language ability to demonstrate their knowledge and skills in a testing situation. So basically what this means is that something will be changed to the environment or the testing protocol to allow certain students um, to be able to access the test. So a lot of people always ask me, how do I know if I need an accommodation? I'm worried I will not get approved for an accommodation. Um, so here are a few ways that you might know that you may need to apply for accommodations. Um, you struggle to complete the practice exam within the allotted time or taking timed test has been difficult for you in the past. So this exam, you will have four hours. And if you find yourself needing more time than four hours, which is, um, you know, the test is 170 questions. If in your practice exams, you are really up against the clock, um, applying for an accommodation for extra time might be very helpful. You can get extra time so that you don't have that added pressure of having to finish within the four hours. If you've received accommodations on prior standardized tests before, this could be in your schooling, um, this could be in college, this could be in a variety of different settings. So if you've received accommodations before, I definitely encourage you to um, apply for them on this exam. It's only going to aid you. If you have difficulty comprehending questions due to language, so this could be maybe you are experiencing a language-based learning disability, or maybe English is not your first language, um, or maybe processing speed is a little bit slower, or working memory is an area that is a challenge, you might be a good candidate to apply for an accommodation. If you have poor vision um, and you would need larger print or screen reading technology, that is something that can be done for you as well. Um, you can make the print bigger on the screen, but this would be if it's something that significantly impacts your ability to see the words on the screen. If English is not your first language, you may apply for accommodation, and that's because it might take you extra time um, because you might be processing within um, two languages or more than two languages, so extra time might be a very good option. Or if you have a physical challenge that requires extra accommodations. I also want you to know that anxiety could be something that allows you to apply for accommodations. So if test taking anxiety is something that is um, affecting you, you definitely maybe want to talk to your provider um, extra time or time without um, distractions. Getting a separate testing room might be appropriate for you as well. I also always tell people that are struggling with the exam. So maybe you are a multiple time test taker and you're just really having difficulty breaking through. I always suggest you look into accommodations. Accommodations might be able to help you. It might be able to just give you um, some extra tools to be able to better access the exam. So um, a lot of times people ask me, should I apply? Absolutely. So there's different types of ASWB test accommodations. And like I said, this comes directly from the ASWB. You will need some sort of documented disability to qualify for a test accommodation. And a documented disability, these are protected under federal and state law. And all that you have to have documentation of is that you have a physical or mental impairment that limits one or more major life activity. You will fill out the accommodations form with a provider, a healthcare provider, maybe a mental health provider. So they will be able to talk you through if you um, 
qualify under this federal protection. Um, the ASWB does cooperate with federal, state, and local legislation, including the Americans with Disabilities Act. Um, you might also need some other non-standard testing arrangements if you have diabetes and you need to monitor medication intake. You might need ambulatory arrangements, such as if you are having some sort of injury or physical impairment, um, or if you need breaks due to pregnancy, um, or I have heard people getting some accommodations due to needing to breastfeed as well. Um, also, if English is your second language, some states, so I would say you want, you, you want to definitely apply. Some states do not allow you um, accommodations if English is your second language, but some social work boards, depending on the state, do allow for candidates um, to get an accommodation if English is their second language. So like I mentioned before, if you have a diagnosis of ADHD, anxiety, um, some sort of physical challenge, um, if you are pregnant or breastfeeding, I definitely suggest that you also um, arrange for this. PTSD can also be something that qualifies under a test accommodation. If you are really struggling to break through on this exam, I do suggest maybe considering working with an educational psychologist because they're, they might be able to do an assessment to better assess some different areas of your learning that might be impacting your ability to find success on this exam. So you're probably wondering, okay, I think I wanna go forward with this, but how do I request accommodations? You need to request your accommodations before you register for your exam. So if you are thinking about this, make sure that you do it before you even sign up because you'll have to fill out some forms to be approved. So there is a link found here. You can also find it on the ASWB site if you type in non-standard testing accommodations. If you just do a quick Google search, you'll be able to find it there. There's two parts. One has to be completed by you. It's going to have some basic information. The other has to be completed by a healthcare provider or other professional that can say, they have the expert knowledge that you do need a test accommodation. So um, I do say that if you are considering this, make an appointment with your healthcare or mental health care provider or other expert professional and kind of discuss this process with them. They will be able to kind of guide you in if this is appropriate for you or not. Um, you then want to submit your request. It's paperwork to the ASWB, and then they should notify you within two weeks, I would say give or take. Um, you know, with COVID, things have been backed up a little bit, and they will either approve your accommodation, say your accommodation information is not complete, or deny. If you are denied an accommodation, I would suggest reaching out to the board directly and asking for more information about why you have been denied because maybe there was a reason or maybe you need to um, go back to your provider and um, maybe there's some clarification needed. Part two of how to request accommodations. Once you've been approved, so say they the board says, yes, you have been approved, then you can register for your exam. And why you have to do it before is because they'll be that they want to give you the accommodation. So that has to be noted in the system. You'll receive an authoriz authorization to test email that will say which accommodations and arrangements you're approved for, and then that information will be sent to Pearson View. Depending on what your accommodation and arrangements are, um, you should be able to, to schedule by online, the online portal for Pearson View, but you may need to schedule by phone that information should come um, when you are given your authorization to test information. Um, always, always, always refer to your authorization to test email. That's going to have all the logistics, all the information you need to schedule, cancel, reschedule your exam. So people always ask me, well, what kind of accommodations can I get? This is going to be very important because when you fill out your accommodations paperwork, you need to specify which accommodations you need. So you want to make sure that you're very explicit and you want to make sure that you include all the accommodations you're requesting because you don't want to have to go back, be re-approved. So I suggest re discussing which accommodations you think are appropriate with your provider and making sure that you cover all of your bases 
and that you are getting um, the specific arrangements that you need that are specific to your situation. These are just some examples of some common test testing accommodations or special arrangements that can be requested. Extended time, this is usually the most common. I've heard of people getting one, two, even up to three hours extra time to take the exam. A paper and pencil exam. Um, this is a test that's done on the computer, but some people, um, due to the nature of their disability, may need to have a paper and pencil exam or the option to take a paper and pencil exam. A private room is sometimes an accommodation. This would be good if um, no, you're sensitive to noise or you're highly distracted and you think being in a more quiet private room would be helpful to you. Access to a snack or water. Um, some Testing sites may allow you to have water um, or a snack, but it, it really depends. So some people might need an accommodation or arrangement to be able to have access to snacks or water as they need it. This is common for people that have felt very faint during the exam or maybe experienced migraines or other medical conditions where they need to have access within that time to snack or water. An English dictionary, this would be if you are applying for English as a second language accommodation. Um, a live test reader, I have heard of this. This would be where someone reads you the test out loud. So this is a very good auditory tool. And then like we mentioned, ambulatory arrangements. This would be if you have some sort of physical challenge that um, limits your ability to sit for the exam. Like I said, I just want to be very clear. Make sure you're asking for all of the accommodations that you're requesting um, up front. So make sure that you talk with that provider so you get all of the um, accommodations and arrangements that you need to be successful. More information about ASWB accommodations can be found um, via the links below. There's the non-standard testing arrangements. Like I said, you can do a Google search of this. And then there's also the candidate rules agreement, which are gonna go over some of the rules, regulations, procedures for taking the ASWB exam. So like I mentioned, I'm just kind of reiterating and pointing out some of the important information around applying for accommodations on the exam. If you are in doubt, I always, always suggest you talk to um, a, a health provider, mental health provider. And like I mentioned, if you're really struggling to pass the exam, you might be a good candidate for accommodations. And remember, you're the best advocate for yourself. So um, make sure that you're getting the tools that you need to be successful. And um, I encourage you to apply for accommodations if you think this is something that would be beneficial to your success on the exam. If you are looking for more study content, feel free to check out my paid study materials. Um, you can check that out at topsocialworktestprep.com. If you have any questions, you can reach me via my email below. I'm always um, open to questions, um, comments, concerns, anything you might have, you can reach me there. And I want to remember to um, always thank you for tuning in to my content today and remember wherever you are in your studying journey um, thank yourself for taking the step towards becoming licensed and remember that you got this um, be proud of yourself be proud of your abilities and um, know that you can do hard things thank you for tuning in i will see you next time